Can you guys believe that this account is a throwaway that was made in the 1700s? Wow. So I forgot how to socialize. Title pretty much says it all. The most I usually do in a friendly conversation is an occasional quip. And most of the time I sit on the sidelines watching everyone else do what they do. My brain simply goes blank when I have to consider how to express myself. I don't even know what chatting with people means. I'm on the spectrum, so it's probably some innate, some parts innate disadvantage and some parts inexperience. From what I could gather, I have some sort of fear of getting in other people's way or not having anything to contribute or otherwise cannot tell how they will react. There's also this sense of feeling like they will have to accommodate me in my strangeness, as well as that of having rest, some resting bitch face and a tendency to glare. I do find as long as all parties have some well-defined role in the interaction, e.g. cashier or customer, and in fact have some semblance of willpower when troubling other people is not a significant risk. Honestly speaking, I don't know where to begin from here. Aside from tackling it head-on by forcing myself into random conversations wherever I feel like it, there should be some way to at least make that process less jarring. So porn throwaway, I certainly hope we can make this process less jarring from you, for you. So what we're going to do in order to make it, instead of just saying forcing yourself into random conversations, we're going to start by understanding why it's difficult for you to socialize. Understand what's going on in your brain that makes it come up with a blank. Because here's the problem, right? Like when you try to socialize, your brain draws a blank. And so it becomes really, really hard to socialize if your brain is drawing a blank. So let's start by understanding how does your brain draw a blank? Where does that blank come from? Why is it coming up blank? And if we can understand how it draws a blank, and then we can understand how to change that so it no longer comes up blank, then the process should be a lot easier for you, and you won't have to force yourself into stuff, okay? So let's start by understanding a little bit about how brains draw blanks. So when I set a task, my brain tends to come up with how to accomplish it, right? So if I say, man, I'm really thirsty. I don't need to say that. I think I'm really thirsty. And then my brain is like, oh, there's a water cup here. Mm. Problem solved, right? So our brain, when we set a task, our brain will operationalize that task. So the term opera, 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 operationalizing is the process of breaking apart one large task into its individual components. It's the execution component, okay? <laughs> so I'll give you all an example. So if I, you know, I have a six-year-old and a four-year-old and their brain's ability to operationalize tasks is like different. So I can tell my six-year-old, go pack a bag for the weekend. And she can like take that complex task and if I tell her what, like if I give her the goal, her brain will tell her what to do. So the brain is like, okay, I have to go get clothing. I have to go grab my toothbrush. I need to go get something to read. I need to go get this. I need to get toys. So the brain will like execute and won't come up blank. If I tell my four-year-old, go pack a bag for the weekend, her brain is going to be like, I don't know what that is. Like if I break it down for her, she can understand it, but she can't operationalize the task. She can't like break it apart, okay? So if you're drawing a blank in, in social situations, the problem is that the goal that you have, your brain doesn't know how to get there, which in turn leaves two solutions. One is we can try to operationalize towards the goal or, or what I think is going to be simpler is we can change the goal in our mind so that the brain can follow suit with like what it's supposed to do, Okay. So, for example, humanity in general is becoming less able to operationalize. So if we look at society, and especially how our brain functions, more stuff is being done for us. So this is absolutely true for gamers. So if you look at video games, they're very good at, like, close-ended problem solving. So the game will give you the goal, and will give you the pieces for the goal, and will allow you to assemble them to get there. So a good example of this is a puzzle in a video game. A puzzle in a video game has a set solution and all the pieces are given to you. You just have to like put them together in the right way. The problem is that like, so games will also give you like, you know, like markers, right? So they'll be like, okay, go here and talk to this person first then go there and talk to their, it like lays everything out for you. You never have to figure out what to do. 
Whereas like, if you look at life, it's like, how many jobs should I apply for? Like how many applications should I figure out? I don't know. Like in an MMO, it's like fill out 10 applications, like go deliver these 10 applications, to these 10 people, like go do this fetch quest. It breaks everything apart for you. And it's not just games, right? It's also things like technology. So, you know, when I log into Netflix or I load up YouTube, like I don't even have to figure out what to watch. Like YouTube will tell me what to watch. It'll be like, hey, what do you feel like right now? Here's this list of choices. What do you want to learn about today? I don't have to like decide for myself what I want to learn about. I'm just going to log into Reddit or I'm going to log into YouTube and it's going to do all that work for me. So the process of like breaking apart a problem and doing open-ended problem solving, like if I'm trying to figure out what to major in, even that is like narrow, right? Because the college provides me with majors. On a broader level, it's like, what do I do with my life? Like no one knows how to answer that question because as a society, we are having things broken down into choices for us. It's all multiple choice. There's no like free answer anymore, right? It's like, what are you going to major in? Are you going to go into college? Are you going to go to trade school? Are you going to do this? Are you going to become a crypto bro? Like, what are you doing? So as our brain has had to do less abstract, open-ended problem solving, because literally most of the time it is like being prompted to react to stuff. Like th these kinds of things happen where our brain doesn't know, like, what am I supposed to do in a social interaction? It's like, what, what, are, what are the goals of the social interaction? Like, I'm confused. Like, where's the quest marker? What am I supposed to do? Like, I need someone to explain this to me. And we can even see that this person clearly is this way. Because look, look at this. I do fine as, as long as all parties have some well-defined role in the interaction. The quest has been given to me. Your quest is to go and purchase a bell pepper. Very good. I can do that. I know what the goal is. I know exactly how to interact. I'm going to go and present them to the hand, the cashier, the bell pepper. They will ring up the bell pepper. I shall pull out the wallet. I shall give them the money. I shall take the bell pepper. I shall say thank you. I shall smile and I shall move on with my day. Success, quest completed, gain 300 XP. So we can see that this person does fine as long as there are bounds to the conversation, right? But I don't even know what chatting, what chatting with people means. It's like, so this is a situation where we have forgotten how to socialize because chatting is a sandbox game. It's like, what's the point? There's no quest marker. Like, I don't understand. Chatting is a sandbox game. Like, what's the point? There isn't a point. And that, now your brain gets super confused. It's like, how do, I, how do I operationalize? How do I get from point A to point Z? And there, there is no point Z. There's just like, I don't understand where I'm supposed to go. And then the brain draws up blank doesn't mean you're dumb or anything. On the contrary, it's, it's, a, it's a huge problem where people are like forgetting how to socially interact because we're so many, everything is a multiple choice. So even like Tinder, right? Like I forget how to talk to people if I use Tinder. And we see it on Tinder, by the way, right? Where it's like now this is, the app is just going to give me people and I have to swipe right or swipe left. I never have to approach anyone and then they will send me a text and I will respond. And it's like everything is being done for us. So social, we're forgetting how to socialize. So this is where if you're in this situation, the main thing that you really need to do is understand what the goal of the interaction is, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about this. So when you're chatting with someone, this is the goal. It's a brief opportunity to get to know the other person. Okay, this is the way that I want you to think about it. This is just a chance for you to figure out, is this someone that I want to interact with in the future or not? That should be goal number one. And so then your brain will be like, okay, well, how do I figure that out? Well, it's like, maybe ask them some questions about themselves. So, you know, you introduce yourself and then you're like, hey, can you tell me a little bit about yours? I mean, that's, that's a hard question to answer. But you can say like, you know, what are you excited for in 2022? That's a great, like, opener. What are you worried about in 2022? Right? You can even go like, you don't even have to ask a question. You can even say like some neutral response. Like, man, I can't believe it's 2022. It's crazy. The other person's gonna be like, yeah, it's crazy. It's like, so what, what do you, you know, what's 2022 looking like for you? So you can just like, just start to ask a couple of questions. And remember, the goal is just to figure out like, do I want to hang out with this person ever again? Second thing is to think a little bit about your goal, uh, uh, yourself in the interaction. So this is where it's an opportunity to share a little bit about yourself. That's the purpose of chatting. It's not like you don't, you're not trying to get this person to like you. It's to just share a little bit about yourself, right? So man, I can't believe it's like 2022. It's nuts. They're like, yeah, man, it's nuts. I'm like, yeah, I've got like 
you won't believe like towards the end of 2021, I made this post about gender dynamics and like a ton of people that I, you know, like hanging out with went nuts. And so now I'm trying to figure out like what to do with that. So you kind of, you kind of just share something about yourself, right? So like you're, it's an opportunity for, for you to share a piece of yourself. Just don't share these nuts. <laughs> okay. And then if you share something like that, you'll see what the other person does. So this is like, this is socialization is about hitting the ball across the net and then you'll see what they hit back. Okay. So it's an opportunity to get to know someone and it's an opportunity to share a piece of yourself. And the main thing to understand about these brief social interactions is that they're brief, that nothing has to come out of them. If you want to understand how to chat, like nothing has to come out of this. Understand that this person is going to be alive for the next 50 or 60 years. Just assume that for a moment, that you're going to be alive for the next 50 or 60 years. In the grand scheme of things, you have one moment in time where the two of you are together and you have an opportunity to exchange something, which could turn into a second conversation or friends or whatever. But at the end of the day, like if you say something wrong, like that's not that big of a deal. It's not like you've ruined this person's life. They're going to go on and live their life. You're going to go on and live your life. And at the end of the day, this is just a brief chance meeting, right? It's like if I walk outside and I look at a tree, this is a brief interaction between me and the tree. The tree doesn't really care that I appreciate it or don't appreciate it. I don't really care that the tree appreciates me or doesn't appreciate me. We're just in each other's presence. We're just going to kind of chill for a little bit together, and then we're going to go our separate ways. So when it comes to chatting, it's just an opportunity to have your life very, very gently intersect with someone else's life, and something could come out of that meeting, or nothing, the high likelihood is nothing can, is going to come out of the meeting, which is totally fine, and that's what life is. It's a string of experiences that have no real consequences, right? That's what the majority of life is. Every time I take a breath, it's not going to transform the world. Every time I take a walk around my house, it's not going to transform the world. Every time I meet another human being, I'm not going to transform their life. They're not going to transform mine. It's just a tiny little opportunity for you to get to know someone else and for you to share a little bit about yourself. That's all it is. And once you begin to realize that it actually doesn't matter what happens today. Like it doesn't, I'm not going to ruin this person's life. I'm not going to save their life. They're not going to ruin my life. They're not going to save my life. You can sort of be a little bit relaxed, right? So what's the purpose of a sandbox game? Is to build something cool. It's like a multiplayer sandbox game where it's like, I'm going to put some stuff together and like, I'll see if you want to put some similar stuff together. And if you want to build a hut and I want to build a car, like you're building your hut and I'm going to build my car and like, that's okay. Eventually what will happen if you, enter into sandbox games with enough people is I will build a car and then you will build a car too. And then I'll walk over and I'll be like, wow, that's a really cool car. I never thought about making the wheels purple. I always assumed I would make the wheels black. And the other person is like, no, 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 man, purple wheels are so much better than black wheels. I'll be like, cool. I never thought about that. Oh, maybe I'll make a red wheel. It's like, yeah, that's dope. Make a red wheel. And then suddenly like you have a friend, right? And so this is, this is how social interaction works. So if you're struggling to understand social interaction, first thing to understand is that our brain has been sort of shaped by too much choice. So instead of figuring things out for ourselves, whether it be quest markers and video games or going onto YouTube or Twitch and like, it tells you what to enjoy, right? Even today, like you guys are showing up to this lecture, you're watching this video and it's like, you didn't decide, hey, this is what I want to seek out. You just like showed up on YouTube or on Twitch or whatever. And Dr. K chose what, what they're going to talk about. So you're just given your choice. And so social interaction can become very, very difficult because there's not a clear choice to make. There's not a clear goal. And so like your mind draws a blank because the way that your mind populates with thoughts is that it has a particular target and then it figures out how to get there. So if I'm thirsty, I'm going to drink some water. It has a goal, and then it sets up the steps. So if your mind is drawing a blank, that means that you don't know what goal to set. And so if you want a very simple goal to set, if you want to understand what's the purpose of chatting, the purpose of chatting is to have an opportunity to get a window into someone else's life, get a window into their thought process to learn a little bit about them, and to share a little bit about yourself. And out of the thousand people that you're going to meet in the next three years— a handful of those, that'll turn into something else. But you don't need to seek that out. You don't need to look for it. You don't need to be tied to it. 
It's just an opportunity for you to, you know, interact with another human being. And if nothing comes of it, so be it. Right? Questions? Ah, so this is a great question. So hi, Cartier is asking, what if it's a grill? And by that, I assume you mean girl. So I know this is going to be kind of mind blowing, very difficult to understand. But the genitalia of the person that you're talking to makes no difference with how you should interact with them. I know it's shocking that just because they have genitals that are different from yours, or maybe they're the same and, and you're, in, you're a lesbian, who knows? Assuming a heteronormative perspective there, but I don't know many lesbians that refer to other women as grills. So maybe that's a safe assumption on my part. Makes no difference. Shocking. That humans are humans. And the genitals don't matter. Don't treat them differently. Treat them like humans. They can like cars too. Just like get into the sandbox game and build what you want to build. Let them build what they want to build. And interact with them as people. The genitalia does not need to define the interaction. Shocking, I know. Confusing, I know. Humans first. I understand that some people struggle with that. That, that's, that makes sense. But then the question is, like, where does that struggle come from, right? So if you have difficulty talking to the opposite sex or girls or the sex that you're attracted to, however, where does that difficulty come from? That difficulty comes from setting a goal that you don't know how to execute, right? So now, like, I'm playing a sandbox game or I'm playing, let's say, Skyrim, and I'm given a quest of, you know, mine a thousand minerals and a thousand gas. And then I get super confused because, like, I don't know how to accomplish that in this game. Like, it gets confusing for me. I don't know how to do this. And then I get anxious, right? Because it's like, so stop playing that game. Like, don't worry about and don't have an expectation to the interaction. Don't try to do something because they're a girl. Like, that's where the problem is coming from. The problem is coming from the goal that you set for yourself, the expectation that you set for yourself, the demand that you put on yourself that this expectation should go a certain way. It's like, no, this is just a brief interaction with another random human being. And the more that you can reframe towards that, the easier it will be to talk to, like, women. Right? Does that make sense? It's all, like, up in here. Who randomly meets 300 people a year? So, like, I don't know if you guys are participating in chat, but there seem to be 5,315 people right now, each of whom is interacting with you. And people are adding each other, right? So, like, oh, like, I'm an indoor... Like, you're interacting with, like, 5,000 people right now. Right? Like, you're interacting with people all the time. Sure. No, 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 no. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Before you guys discount this kind of interaction, this is real. You can hop on Discord afterward. You're going to talk to other people. Like, you meet 300 people a year on Discord through games and through Twitch. Don't tell me otherwise. Right? And people will respond to each other on chat. People will answer each other's questions. Like, those are interactions. And that's easy. Why? Because there's no expectation. Right? You all get that? We meet more people now than we used to. We have more opportunities for interaction than we used to. This is the big paradox of like being online is that there's like way more people to meet and it's like somehow it's way harder to meet them. It's kind of weird, but you can't, you, I can absolutely do it, right? You can have a meaningful conversation with someone. I actually think that the discord is really good at this where it's like, cause people can sort of offer support. They can like meet for a moment in time and there's no expectation. That's why it's so easy to hang out with people on discord because you're not expecting anything from them. 